Right. Good morning, boys and girls.
fantastic. My tongue got tired just by listening to that, but you did exceptionally well. Let's give them another round of applause. So a very good morning to all of you and a, a special greeting to Sister Cheryl Ann. Welcome to Brother Gabriel and to Miss Harris. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'd like to start with two Bible readings and then I'd like to chat a little bit and then revisit those Bible readings that I'll be sharing with you. And the first is from Peter verse 1, uh, sorry, Peter, and it is verse 1, and it reads in chapter 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His mercy He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the second reading is from the book of Hebrews, and it reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So we have arrived at the end of our term, and in just over a week, we'll be coming to the end of another Lenten <laughs> season. So as we do at the end of every term, we look back and we reflect. So I'm going to start with that question that I always pose. How has this term gone for you? <clears throat> the first term of the year, we often arrive back from our holidays full of New Year's resolutions, full of enthusiasm and full of goals. Have you been able to live up to those resolutions? Have you met your goals? If so, and you've been happy with what you've achieved, think about what made it successful. How were you able to do it? And if things perhaps didn't go according to your plan, maybe ask yourself, what can you do better next time? And were those things that made you go off the track a little bit in your control, or were they out of your control? Because the same question that I asked about how the term is for you can be asked how your Lenten season has been. How has your commitments that you made at the start of Lent worked out for you? On Wednesday you'll be getting a report card and it will discuss how you've achieved in the classroom and the standard of work that you were able to produce this term. But imagine if there was a report card on Lent what would that look like? And what would it say? We're going to ask Mr. Bernal just to change the slide. Maybe it'll look something like this. And you don't need to answer out aloud because this is a report card that you're going to produce in your mind for yourself. So we have three categories. Excellent, so that means really went well and it was the best you could have done. Satisfactory is that space in between where it wasn't bad, but it also wasn't that great either. And then the final one is needs work. Something that you might set for yourself as a target the next Lenten season. So if we start off with Harmony, and we did that assembly on Harmony, where I showed you the video clip of DJ Black Coffee, and we spoke about Harmony, and wherever you find Harmony, there will be peace. And we also asked ourselves the question, do we add to Harmony? do we take away from it? So how would you rate yourself then? Relationships. This was something that we spoke about at the start of the Lent. God is looking at our own lives, but also how our lives interact with others. It might be our relationships with our teachers, with our friends, with our brothers or sisters, with our parents, our relationships with the poor, the relationships that we have with people that perhaps we don't get along with. So how are your relationships this Lent? Then the next three, they often come up. Actions, words, and thoughts. In everything we do, in everything we say, and in everything that we think. Was it a good advertisement of God's love and God's expectations of us? You'll be able to answer that question. And in the final two, prayer. Lent is based on prayer. And as I'm going to show to you just now, Prayer is not only about getting on your knees and talking to God. 
Prayer can come in a variety of forms. And then the final category is your overall commitment. How committed have you been this Lenten season? So that's between you and yourself. But like your school report card, your Lenten report card is most important in one category, and that is the amount of effort that you put in. Because that is exactly what God is looking at. It's about the effort, and sometimes not so much about the actual outcome. But as long as the effort is there, then you're on the right track. Throughout the Lenten season, we've often spoken about spring cleaning your hearts. And that means moving our focus away from the external noisy world of screens, of music, of wanting to go shopping, of spending time on a phone, of wanting extra Uber Eats, and what do I want to order on Uber Eats? Those things that perhaps become a barrier between us and God. So when we sprinkle in our, car, our hearts, we have to look inside of ourselves. Next slide, please. So I want to show you this. I don't know if you guys have seen this type of sweet before. It's jelly beans. I love jelly beans. But these are jelly beans that you only get overseas. And I've managed to get two boxes of them. They're called Bean Boozled. But these aren't ordinary jelly beans. You see, inside you get flavors such as toasted marshmallow, you get buttered popcorn, you get tutti frutti, you get chocolate pudding, you get birthday cake, and you get strawberry banana smoothie. So they're very different, and they're very, very, very tasty. However, in the same box, you also get jelly beans that have a different type of flavor. So you get stink bug flavor, you get rotten egg, you get smelly socks, rotten milk, there's even one flavored dog food. But the thing about these jelly beans is that they all look exactly the same. And I would love to try some of these jelly beans on you guys, but I won't. Ooh, there's a hand up straight away, don't worry, so yeah, I won't let you do it. I'm even more excited to try this on a teacher, perhaps, but I think it might not be the, the right time. Mr. Sweet Thomas is, oh, uh, he's up for it. Okay, Mr. Sweet Thomas is going to come forward. Okay. So I hope this works out well. Like I said, as you look at these jelly beans, they might all look exactly the same. Although they're different colors, you don't actually know what's happening on the inside. So, I'm going to give Mr. Smith Thomas a few of these, and I'm sure it won't take too long before we realize what's actually happening on the inside. So, Mr. Smith Thomas, thank you so much for being so brave. I wasn't expecting anyone to actually... what 
spring cleaning our hearts is about because Lent is focusing on what's inside of us. God is taking the time to look inside our hearts. He knows what's happening inside of them. But He's asking us to do the same, to stop looking outside and to look inside because that's what really matters. Just like the jelly beans, it doesn't actually matter what they look like, it matters what they taste like. And it's the same for us. It doesn't matter what we look like, but it's how clean our hearts that really counts. A very important component of Lent is service. And you would have heard this in your RE lessons, and you would have been given many different examples of it. Service is putting the needs of those around you ahead of your own. Of your own. Being first to be of service is something that we know so well. But just for a short time, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of someone that you know or someone that you've heard of that you consider to be great. To be very, very great. So you just have to think of a person. Okay. Thank you. You can open your eyes. But now I'm going to ask you what makes a person great? And something that I read that I'd like to share with you is well, how we can measure if someone is great or not. The finest quality of greatness is service. Next slide, please. The finest quality of greatness is service. So the people that you were thinking of as being great, they might be famous, they might have a talent for something, but those that are extraordinary, kind, and generous in their service, that for me is a true definition of someone who is great. We know that across the world in Ukraine, there's a very, very sad situation that is taking place. We know the Ukrainian people are still trapped in their own towns. Many have had to leave their homes and have taken nothing with them. And some people are remaining there, positive that the war will end. But remaining there becomes a very big risk. And sometimes they actually have to live in underground bunkers, away from the fresh air, away from fresh water, and they just have to listen to the sounds of bombs being dropped. And sometimes it gets closer, sometimes it moves further away. And they've got to learn to pass the time. So they obviously feel scared, they feel helpless. And some of you might have seen this, there was a young Ukrainian girl who tried to cheer everyone up one day in her bunker. And she sang the song that we all know well from Frozen, Let It Go, in Ukrainian. And when she was asked in the bunker, but why are you singing this? She said her dream was to sing in front of a huge audience one day, but now with the war, she doesn't seem to think that that's going to happen. So I want you to watch this and listen and just understand that it is in Ukrainian. So although you won't pick up the words, I'm sure that you'll pick up the emotion. Thank you, Mr. Vanel. <laughs>
lesson to all of us about the power of our voices and the question of how well do we use our voices? Do we use our voices to build people up? Do we use our voices to pull people down? Do we use our voices sometimes to gossip and to talk in closed spaces? That little girl was using her voice to bring hope to others. And that is exactly what Jesus did. Jesus used his voice to bring hope to others. His most powerful tool while he was on earth was his voice. And he used it to heal people both physically and spiritually. And that is a lesson I think we can take with us every day of our lives. I know many of you have given up your time to build mosaics around our school and each piece of a mosaic might seem very insignificant on its own it might seem worthless and it wouldn't really grab your attention and you would have seen them you worked with them with your own hands and sometimes in life little incidences might be like a piece of mosaic they might, might not make sense they might be hard to comprehend and you might actually discard a situation thinking that it's not important but it's incredible with the mosaic that when you put the pieces together and you take the time to look at what you're doing how a wonderful image begins to emerge Yesterday I was so proud of you, the way that you did your Stations of the Cross. The stillness, the quiet. And I think with each station, if you had to look at it, it's quite a powerful thing. But when you take the season of Lent, and when you take the Stations of the Cross, and you put them together, the most incredible and powerful, miraculous image of the Resurrection comes together. So, that's exactly what you created with these very same pieces that I held up earlier. And as you celebrate Easter, and as you journey through Good Friday, which is the sad part, and then you strive towards the excitement of Easter Sunday, I want you to reflect back on the stations and put it together, and you'll be able to see the picture that God wants you to see. I mentioned prayer in one of the Lenten report card topics and as we know prayer is not only a very big part of Lent but it's a very big part of all religions and sometimes we find ourselves in situations where maybe we don't know how to pray and perhaps we don't have the words or maybe we know that we should pray but we just don't get down to it. So we spend all this time trying to think about praying and, and the words that we're going to use and we actually don't get anywhere. And there's a wonderful clip that really sums this up quite nicely. And it also shows God's understanding for us as we grapple with our own prayer lives. Thanks Mr. Bernard.
kind gesture, prayer can be in the support of someone without having to say a word. So that is exactly how prayer works, and that's all that God is expecting us when it comes to prayer. So my final point. There is no way I can do an assembly this close to Easter and not chat about the Easter Bunny. And it always amazes me with the Easter Bunny when you go to the shops this time of year and the shelves are full of different chocolates. Sometimes if you go to a shopping centre you might actually see a Easter Bunny walking by. How different they all look. And I always wonder, who is the true Easter Bunny? Because is the Easter Bunny in fact a boy or a girl? Who thinks the Easter Bunny is a girl? Okay, who thinks the Easter Bunny is a boy? Okay. But why? We've got no evidence to base any of that on, we're just assuming. And then, as my demonstration shows you, there's an Easter Bunny that is white with a pink nose. There is this gorgeous brown bunny. And then there's this chap who's somewhat in between. There's a bit of white, a bit of brown. And then I even managed to find this guy who has a blue and white shirt and whose ears stand up. Then we might see this chap in the shop, he's gold, and he's got a green and white shirt on. And then there's probably the most famous Easter Bunny of all time, and that's our lint chocolate. And then this guy is brown with a big blue dot on his chest. So Easter Bunnies come in many, many different styles. And then there's even this strange chap that I'm going to ask to come on stage now. See how different he looks. <laughs> so then there's that version of the Easter Bunny. <laughs> He's left his glasses at home. And then, there's this version of the Easter Bunny. I'm going to ask my friend Jaden to show us this one. So this is a bunny named Peter. And just a couple of facts on bunnies. Did you know that bunnies can give birth to up to 500 babies in their lifetime? And the name of a baby bunny is a kitten. And in one litter, they can give birth to up to 15. The average is about seven. So, very, very sweet, Jaden. Thank you very much for bringing Peter in to show us. So bunnies come in many different shapes, sizes, colors, and forms. So I think we can possibly feel okay being a bit confused about it. Because then how is the connection made between bunnies and Easter? Well, the first is we've seen with litters that they have and the amount of bunnies around, that bunnies represent exactly what Jesus represented through his resurrection, and that is new life. New life is the hope that Jesus wants us to have every single day when we wake up. And we also know the Easter Bunny might bring Easter eggs to your house. And eggs, the birth of a chick, is also representative of new life. So that is the connection between the Easter Bunny and, and how it came in with, with Easter. But then there's another thing we must remember, and I encourage you to remember this every time you go to the shop and you see a very strange or different version of the Easter Bunny. And this is when I'm going to go back to the Bible verse. Although the Easter Bunny might be different every time you look at it, although every day might seem different to you when you embrace it, just remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That doesn't change. It will never change. And whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're old, whether you're young, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, Jesus' love for you will remain exactly exactly the same. So, this Lenten season, I hope that you're going to take the time to respect the holy days that are coming up next week. And yes, take the time to be still on Good Friday and to understand what is happening in our liturgical calendar. 
And then on Sunday, I want you to celebrate because that is the resurrection and that is the hope, that is the second chance that Jesus gives us every single day of our lives. So whether it's been a good term for you or not, whether it's been a successful Lenten season or not, I just leave you with this. Like at school, each day, try, try, and try again. Because as long as you're trying, that's what really counts. Please bow your heads and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us remember that we're in the holy presence of God. Dear Lord, we come before you with grateful and happy hearts, pleased with the term that has been and excited by what lies ahead. This Lenten season, we are sorry for the times where we might have let ourselves down, proud of the times where we stood firm, and for the renewed energy to carry on trying as best we can. We pray that you protect us and surround us with your angels during the holiday period. Give us the rest that our bodies need and guide us to use our time in a way that is pleasing to you. Thank you for being a consistent and loving presence in our lives, for the virtue of forgiveness, the gift of second chances, and for the hope that is born out of new life. Help us to pass on that hope to others and to live by your example in all that we do. Mother Bernarda, St. John Baptiste de La Salle, Hail Holy Cross, Amen. and give Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have three Vesalian stars that I'd like to hand out this morning. And the first is to Finlay McKay. Finlay has been, as some of you know, on crutches for the past month. He broke his foot a few days before we went to camp, but nonetheless at camp he participated in every single activity, never once complaining, never once wanting to sit out. And this is a wonderful example of perseverance and grit. But then also to Arik Dale. Arik was Finn's second pair of hands and second pair of legs. He helped him to carry his bag, his food, his water, and was always there to assist him. And he still continues to assist Finn now, even though we are back at school. What an example of a special friend. Let's give those two boys a hand. And while we wait for them to come on stage, the third and final Assalian Award goes to Dominic Finnemore. So Dominic has lived out our motto, be first so that you may be of service. He was an outstanding role model because what he did was that he stood up for a friend when the friend was in a very vulnerable situation. Dominic could have easily ignored the situation, but he chose to do what was right not what was easy. And that was the difference that Dominic made in the life of his friend. So a big round of applause for Dominic.
and make it seem so easy. So let's give them another hand. That was really well done. Thank you, Miriam and team. Uh, boys and girls, just a quick one. Uh, just a bit of an update from last week, the 1st of April, when we had our fun day. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I think there was a lot of excitement on the field. We couldn't have asked for much better weather than we obviously experienced. Um, considering this week that it's really cold, it's almost like winter is um, upon us. Um, so, and also just that excitement and the way you guys are purchasing all the tickets. Thank you so much for your generosity, for your support. Um, so on that note, a reminder that um, over the weekend you can still purchase all your tickets by, EF, or by EFT and POPs. So on Monday morning, that will be the final day for ticket sales. Um, only proof of payments will be, will be accepted on Monday as well as cash. Uh, but so after that, then all ticket sales will end. And then on Wednesday next week, we will do the final draw for all those wonderful, wonderful hampers. And I think you can agree with me that it looks fantastic. So thank you to all the parents um, that obviously also contributed in so many ways. Um, and I, yeah, I hope you guys win what you want to win because it's a really nice process to, to um, up for grabs. Uh, boys and girls, just also for this morning, before we start with all the different certificates, just a reminder, um, as we indicated in one of our newsletters before, um, and also in previous assemblies, that the tennis, swimming, cricket, those particular sporting activities, runs over two terms. Um, so it's first term and the third term, and because of this, the certificates and sport awards for most improved and player of the season or swimmer, will only be announced in the third term, final term assembly. So both those terms, first term and third term, will be considered when names are nominated. And then, um, yeah, I hope that clarifies it. So if you don't receive anything this or today for cricket, swimming or tennis, it is because it falls over two terms. So just also a minor from my side, thank you so much for your um, contribution or your um, participation in all the various different co-curricular activities, whether it was um, cultural or sport and thank you for always being there supporting the school and remember this is also for you to learn different skills that one day you can obviously also take for yourself so on that note as well have a wonderful holiday which is obviously only next week but I don't think we're going to see much of you um, because the, the term is coming to an end rest well and then we can also look forward to everything the second term has installed for us so rest look after yourself and then also just thank your parents for all the opportunities which they also give and present to each one of you. On that note, I would like to ask Ms. Mrs. Steele to come to the front just to announce um, the various different diligence awards for this morning. Thank you so much. Diligence Awards are awarded to the pupils in grade 4, 5 and 6 who have shown a consistently high standard in behaviour, both inside and outside of the classroom, attitude towards their work, the wearing of their uniform, their manners, their participation in co-curricular programme and the upholding of our school ethos, as well as their work ethic in all subjects, both academic and cultural. The Diligence Award is not based on any results. Children who receive a Diligence Award have achieved a score of 85% average from all their teachers. And a Diligence Award is attainable by all pupils, and we encourage you all to work towards receiving one going forward. So the first term Diligence Awards for the grade fours are presented to, and I'm gonna read a whole class, and then we can clap for all of them at the end. So firstly, Scarlett Ambrose, Kira Galal, Connor Hammond, Kirsten Carter, Luke Leacher, Megan McGee, P. 
Peter Melpage, Gabriella Menelo, Gabriella Pereira, Sophia Ramji, Adam Chu, and Sienna Vatalidis. And we'll just wait for them all to come onto the stage and then we can give them all a big clap. And well done, grade four C. Well done for art. Right, well done, great fools. In the diligence award for the grade fives, in 5C, Jessica Boerta, Apiwe Botelezi, Brooklyn Cabrita, Daniel Correa, Jaden Hull, Claire Guinness, Madison Turbin Setzkorn, Maria Sienna Schwendinger, Alexandra van Beek, and Reese Woodley Smith. Okay, just going to take a little while. 
all to come downstairs. Well done, five C. In five J, Alessia Hanush, Alexandra Hodgson Jarvis. Joshua John, Gabriella Lakos, Erin Lee Maho, Samara Pariachi, Caitlin Phillips, Gareth Rivers, Sophia Taylor, and Caleb West. Do you want to come down for the grade sixes afterwards? Well done, five J. And then grade five R, Afra Barbarus, Victoria Davis, Amelia Davis, Gemma De Talisi, Giordana Duarte, Alabama Goldfain, Zach Lavery, Andre Manamambe and Finley Malkai. Sorry, Finn. Well done, five on.
six divisions of all dice colors. And six C, Charlotte Griffiths, Kirsten Hanford, Devon Nyander, Penelope Shell, Vashti Pele, Samuel Shepard, and Christopher Theophilus. Right, well done to all of those boys and girls that did receive diligence. In no means does it mean that the rest of you can't actually also receive a certificate. So just try and put a few more. Uh, if they didn't, 
and maybe also just ask your teachers where you, there might have been a shortfall, so you can try and work on that. Um, I'd like to now ask Mrs. De Klerk and Mrs. Goldfain, the great for the senior choir, to come to stage for a performance. Let's welcome you to stage. Thank you so much.
It was wonderful, Clyde. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who performed in the music celebration last week. It was really exciting for all of us to listen to you again and to share the excitement and to see the fruits of all your hard work over many months. And um, thank you very, very much once again. And for those of you that might be thinking of participating in the music celebration evening or joining the choir or joining marimbas but aren't quite sure about it, please maybe use the holiday to, to consider it. It is a wonderful part of our school that we're very proud of and I'd like to encourage all of you to join a cultural group of your choice. So our famous oak tree that we have on the field, many of you would have noticed by now that the trees on it have started to change colour. Not only on that tree, but on many of the trees surrounding our school and in the, in the surrounding suburbs. A clear sign that summer is fading and autumn is emerging. And when seasons transition like they are now, I often think that it's God's way of reminding us that first of all, He is always in control and that change in life always happens and can't be avoided. Miss Harris has served our school in so many different roles over so many years and today I'd like to thank her and honour her for what she has accomplished in her most recent role, that of college principal. Thankfully, we are not saying goodbye to Miss Harris as she will continue in her position as head of the high school and for that we are truly grateful. But when someone is so committed and so caring, they actually need a little bit more than a Lasallian Holy Cross star. They need a very deep and sincere thank you. So Ms. Harris, thank you for the way you have cared for us, the way you have supported us, and looked after both schools during your time as college principal. And as I said, although Ms. Harris will now be committing most of her time and attention on the high school, we all know that your affection and your passion for both schools will continue to run deep. You are not only a good friend, a wonderfully sincere person and a gifted leader, you are a college principal who has allowed herself to be an instrument of God. And from all of us and the school, we've all been blessed as a result. And we just ask that God will continue to work through you and bless you and abide in you. Remember, the finest quality of greatness is service, which therefore makes you exceptionally great. We give thanks for the graces you have been blessed with, and thank you for sharing those graces with us. And now, boys and girls, I ask you to stand for our hymn, which you've been working very hard on in praise and worship, and we're going to sing this to Miss Harris as a sign of our grateful thanks.
you very much. And if I could ask Ms. Harris to come forward to receive a small gift as our token of appreciation. Thank you. this wonderful image and then I spoke about Lent and the life of Jesus and the stations of the cross and when you put all of that together it creates an absolute miracle um, which provides us with so much hope. So the holiday challenge is going to be called the Piecing It Together Challenge. So maybe you would like to construct your own mosaic, maybe you would like to build a puzzle, maybe you would like to build a Lego um, construction. Maybe it's a model. That, uh, maybe you would like to build something. Whatever it is, is completely up to you. The aim of the Piece It Together project, though, is to take little bits of pieces of whatever it might be and create something that forms an image. And if you'd like to participate in that challenge, all I'm asking you to do is take a photo of what you have created from different pieces, and then when we meet each other again next term, you can show me those photos and we will display them and we might even decide on a winner. So all the best and I hope a lot of you take me up on that challenge. And then although she's not here at the moment, I would like to wish Miss Fenter all of the best. She will be getting married in the holidays. So Miss Fenter, our grade one teacher, we keep her in our prayers as she gets married um, in the next coming weeks. And then also to Mrs. Coleman, who will be having her baby quite soon. So she'll be off and she'll be welcoming her second child and that is another staff member that we will be keeping in our prayers. And then as Mr. Nolte mentioned, just thank you very much for all the enthusiasm and excitement that has gone into the Happy Hamper raffle which is taking place. The foyer has been a buzz with lots of people trying to decide which hampers to go for and which one might be the lucky ticket. So thank you very much. There's still a few days to buy your, your tickets for that. And um, we're looking forward to that draw, which will take place after Mass on Wednesday, just before we go on our, our holiday. So on that note, I'd, last, I'd like to ask us to please stand so we can close with our school song. Mm -hmm. 